Okay, next uh, in the series, looking at some paper fours from the IGCSE syllabus, we're going to look at some uh, algebra questions. So here's some essential algebra questions that you need to be able to do. Um, okay, so first one is factorizing double brackets. Here we go, x squared minus 3x minus 10. Okay, so look at this. We've got a 10. Uh, what are the factors of 10? Well, it's 10 and 1 or 5 and 2. We've got a minus 10, so therefore one of these is either going to be minus 10 or minus 1 or minus 5 or minus 2. So we've got a minus there somewhere, and they've got to basically add up to give us a minus 3 uh, as well. So we basically try the different possibilities, and we get this one is the one that gives us the answer. Minus 5 times 2 is minus 10, but minus 5x plus 2x gives us minus 3x. Okay, that's the first one. Uh, next one, solve 2x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. Keep your answer to three decimal places. Okay, whenever you see uh, give your answer to decimal places, we know that it's going to be quadratic formula. Uh, it's not going to factorize. Okay, so uh, it's pretty straightforward. This is as long as you remember the formula. A is 2, B is minus 2, and C is minus 3. Okay, so just write them down. So don't make any mistakes on this. Write them down. A is 2, B is minus 2, C is minus 3. Um, write down the formula, so minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And the important thing is to uh, make sure you use the brackets. Okay, so as long as we stick the brackets in, we've got b is minus 2, so we stick minus 2 in here, and then we stick minus 2 in the brackets there. a and c, c is minus 3 all over to a, so 2 times 2. Okay, um, and then to work out the answer, actually I don't know if I actually worked out the answer to this one, so you might have to do this yourself um, once you finish watching the video. Uh, basically you're going to have two possible answers. The first one, um, just ignore the minus, and then just stick it all in the calculator exactly like that. As long as you've got a calculator that can handle fractions, it's all pretty straightforward, but make sure you put the brackets in, uh, you'll get one answer. And then the next one, um, again, put the, everything into the calculator, but ignore the plus and just put the minus there. Okay, so you should end up with two possible answers. Okay, uh, next one. Um, solve these equations. Um, so we've got 4x minus 7 equals 8 minus 2x. Okay, so we can just... Um, oops, we can just... Rearrange everything. So if we just add 2x to both sides, we're going to get 6x. Add 7 to both sides, we get 15. Divide both sides by 6. There we go, 15 over 6. Okay. Uh, next one, uh, x minus 7 over 3 is 2. Well, times both sides by 3. So I'm going to get x minus 7 is 6. Okay, add 7 to both sides, x is 13. Okay, next one. We get some simplifying expressions. Uh, 3xy to the power 4, all cubed. Um, okay, we just need to remember that we, we need to do each bit in turn. So we've got 3, and that's going to be cubed. So we're going to get 3 cubed here. We've got x, well that's x to the power 1. And then we times the powers because it's in the bracket. So that's going to become x to the power 3. Now this is y to the power 4. Again, we times the powers because they're in the bracket, so we get y12, well, 3 to the power 3 is 27, so we get 27x3y12. Okay, next one, very similar to the last one, but this time it's a half. Half is the same as a square root, um, so I just basically do the same thing. So I've got 16 to the power half, and then I've got 6 times by half, which gives me 3, and 2 to the power half, which gives me 1. And then I just need to know that 16 to the power half is the same as square root of 16, which is 4. So I've got 4a cubed and b. Okay, when we get to the last one, um, we were asked to simplify this. Whenever you're asked to simplify an algebraic fraction, okay, what we're expecting is to see some sort of double brackets, either top or bottom or both, and then one of those brackets will be the same, and then we can just cancel out. In this case here, well, let's just factorize the top first. And we get this one here, so we get x minus 8 and x plus 1. So again, I've looked for two numbers that multiply together to give minus 8 and add together to give minus 7. OK, 
Okay, I can check. So minus 8x plus x is minus 7x. Yeah, minus 8 times 1 is minus 8. Okay, that's fine. The one on the bottom is a bit harder to see, but we kind of know that it's going to be a double bracket, otherwise this won't simplify. And we've got an x squared in a 64. This is a square number, and it's an x squared. Take away that square number. So this is the little trick. We get x plus 8, x minus 8. 8 times minus 8 gives us minus 64. And then the reason there's no x's in here is because we end up with an 8x and a minus 8x, and they cancel out. So I end up with this thing here. And as you'd expect, there's a bracket that's the same in the top and the bottom. That's the x minus 8. So they just cancel out. So what is left is, let's just see if we can see. We should end up with x plus 1 on the top and then x plus 8 on the bottom. So that's my simplified answer. Let's get rid of that. It's not confusing. Yep, so there we go. So let's just rewrite. There we go. x plus 1 on the top and x plus 8 on the bottom. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, here we go. Here's another simplifying algebraic fractions. Um, okay, so step number one, we need to make the denominator uh, equal. So we've got an x plus 2 here and we've got an x plus 1 here. So step number one, times the top and the bottom of the first fraction by x plus 1, times the top and the bottom of the second fraction by x plus 2. Step number one. Um, Luckily for this, we don't actually have to expand out the bottom fraction, the, the bottom brackets. We can just leave it in that form there. But we do need to expand out the top brackets, um, and we're going to get something that looks like that. So I've just expanded out my double bracket: two x times x, two x squared, two x times one, and then I've got three times x. So I've got five x in total. Three times one is three, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I get this thing here. Now, be very, very careful. You've got a minus. You're taking away all of that second fraction. Okay, that's the most common mistake is to forget that you're taking away everything. So I get this. And here we go. Here's the problem. Look, so I take away the x squared. So that, that's fine. But I also take away the 2x. So that has to be a negative. Don't make that mistake. Uh, so that's what's all going to be on the top. The bottom, as I said, I can just leave like this. If I simplify all of that top bit, I'm going to get x squared plus 3x plus 3, and then I'm going to get uh, x plus 2, and then x plus 1 on the bottom. Um, as before, well, I might actually be able to simplify this a little bit more, so can I do anything with this? I've got an x squared plus 3x uh, plus 3. Can I make that into a double bracket? got an x uh, plus 3, uh, an x plus 1. It's not going to work. So I'm not going to be able to get anything that's um, going to simplify giving me one of uh, things that are going to cancel. So I can therefore just leave my answer looking like this. So I've got an x squared plus 3x plus 3 on the top and an x plus 2, x plus 1 on the bottom. Okay, next one. Um, algebra problem solving. Here we go. Cost of a loaf of bread is x. Cost of a cake is x minus 5. The cost of uh, 6 loaves of bread and 11 cakes is this. Find the value of x. Okay, so this is going to be some of our working out on this one. Um, 6 loaves of bread. Well, each bread costs x. So this is the cost of 6 loaves of bread. And 11 cakes. Well, each cake costs x minus 5. So this is the cost of 11 cakes. And the total cost, well, I've just converted this into cents because I'm in cents for this and cents for this. So I just times by 100. So $13.56 is the same as 1,356 cents. So that is my equation. Now I've got my equation. I can expand out my brackets. So I get 6x plus 11x minus 55 is this. I then got 17x, take away 55. I then add the 55 to both sides, I then divide by 17, I get x is 83. Okay, so just be careful on this one, make sure that the units are the same. So you can either make this into dollars or you can make this into cents. Okay, a couple more algebra problem solving questions. Uh, they like this one. This is where you have areas and you're, you, you have to find that the areas are equal or something, you have to find out what x or y is. Um, 
There we go. Well, the area of this rectangle is the same as the area of this triangle. Well, the area of this rectangle is y times by y plus 3. The area of this triangle is 2y plus 1 times by y plus 1 times by a half, because it's a triangle. So I just write that out. They've got to be equal. And then if they're equal, I'm going to get some sort of uh, equation. So there we go. I get y squared plus 3y on, on the left-hand side. If I expand out all this on the right-hand side, I'm going to get, eventually, something that looks like this. So half times by 2y squared plus 3y plus y plus 1. Okay, from here you could times everything by half. In this case here I've just times both sides by 2. So I'm going to get 2y squared plus 6y equals what was left in the brackets there which is 2y squared plus 3y plus 1. Okay. Once you get to this stage here, you can notice that you've got uh, a 2y squared on both sides. So therefore, um, they're going to just cancel. So if they just cancel, if they cancel out, you're going to get 6y equals 3y plus 1. Therefore, 3y is equal to 1. Therefore, y is equal to 1 over, I don't know if you can see that, 1 over Three. Okay, there we go. So y is equal to 1 over 3. Okay, next question. Last one. Um, area of a triangle 2.5, and then it says show that uh, some relationship with u and uh, u squared, etc. Okay, so don't be kind of put off by this one. Just think, well, how, if I'm finding the area of a triangle, that's just going to be base times height divided by 2, and I know that the area must be equal to 2.5. So I just write down an equation. There we go. A half times by u times by 3u minus 2 must be equal to 2.5. And I just expand out my bracket. I'm going to get this. And then I need to try and make it look the same as what I've been asked to give. Well, if I times everything by 2 and then move the 5 on this side, yep, I do actually get what I was supposed to try and find.